So the Tallahassee, Florida mission, it's huge. Um, it, so it's the panhandle of Florida, but it also includes parts of Georgia, Mississippi, and Alabama. So there were some missionaries who they get called there and they never even serve in Florida, which is kind of cool. Um, and there's actually not a temple in our mission boundaries. Um, the closest one, there was Orlando and then Fort Lauderdale, I think is probably a little closer or, um, the Birmingham, Alabama, but, um, all were out of our bounds. But I think the really unique thing about the FTM, the people there were so, they're already very familiar with Christ and they have a lot of faith. Um, very warm, loving, full-hearted, generous people, um, which made mi the missionary work in some ways harder because they had their convictions already, but in some ways it was such a joy to associate with so many faithful people, even if it, you know, it's a different faith. Um, that was a really unique experience. Um, and they definitely, food is part of their love language <laughs> down there. But, um, yeah, it was it was a joy and there's a lot of beautiful beaches down there, very different from um, like South Florida. Um, they're a little bit more quiet and family oriented, um, which was just beautiful, very enjoyable. So, yeah. So I initially, you know, Florida is the sunshine state. So I kind of assumed, oh yeah, like just a light jacket, maybe for the rain. Um, but it definitely does get cold because of that wet climate. Um, the, the wet cold is so different from the dry cold that I'm used to. It's a lot more, it like goes straight to your bones. So I definitely would recommend not only having like a rain jacket, but having a warm coat. Um, and layers are a really good idea because again, it's humid. So we know when it's cold, you want those layers. And then when it's not, you want to be able to lighten your load. So that's what I'd recommend. Definitely have a full on winter coat though. <laughs> For me, the clouds in the South are absolutely enormous. There, I've never seen such gorgeous clouds. I know it sounds like a funny thing to say, but for whatever reason, I love the clouds. And for me, it was a representation of the presence of God. For whatever reason, whether I was afraid um, or just had a wonderful spiritual experience and you know felt overwhelmed with the Spirit, every time I would look up at the clouds, I felt so close to my Heavenly Father. And it became a a huge like theme and comfort for me throughout my mission. Um, and so because of that, um, the hymn, How Great Thou Art, it became a very sacred hymn to me because it talks about, you know, the beauty of the earth and, and how all of that reflects and praises to our Heavenly Father. Um, so for me, those big fluffy clouds will always be sort of a sacred thing in my mind as a representation of God. And, and I always knew that He was aware of me he was watching me. So whether it was, you know, a hard day of knocking doors and not re people not being receptive, I would look up at the clouds and just think, there's no such thing as a wasted effort. Heavenly Father sees me. He knows these people. He has plans for all of us. And it was just a huge comfort and brought me so much peace. So initially when I got called to Florida, um, the Tallahassee mission, I was really nervous because I'm a huge health nut, like insanely. And I thought, my first thought was, oh my gosh, fried food. Like I'm going to get fed a ton of fried food and I'm going to get, you know, and I was so afraid. But honestly, um, going down there, yes, they definitely have a lot of, you know, boiled peanuts. That was the first for me. Grits, a lot of fried chicken, um, corn casseroles and cornbread, all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, for the most part, it was pretty similar to what I'm used to and just a little more love in it, a little more grease. <laughs> but no, I really enjoyed that actually. <laughs> so one of the interesting things about serving in the South um, in the FTM, especially in Tallahassee, there were just churches on every corner of different faiths, um, billboards everywhere of like religious sayings. You, you don't see that really anymore. People don't, at least not, not where I'm from, they don't talk about God so frequently. It's not that you know, in your face, so to speak, but there it very much so is, is the norm for people to be very open about religion. And like I said, um, churches on every street corner, which was very interesting to me. And again, that presented some challenges, but also so many wonderful opportunities because the people there, you know, they do know their Bible, um, which 
can really help actually in introducing the Book of Mormon. Um, and one thing I do want to mention is that I think there's kind of a, a reputation or an assumption that there's a lot of Bible bashing that takes place in, in Southern missions or in the Florida Tallahassee mission. And for me personally, that was not the case. I did not see that at all. I was expecting it, but it really wasn't an issue. Most people, um, like I said, it, it kind of helped them to accept the Book of Mormon, I found. And they loved when you shared how um, you were also, you know, familiar with the Bible and a testimony of the Bible. So it definitely can be. So um, my last area that I served in for seven and a half months was Tallahassee, Florida, which was obviously like the heart of our mission. It's where the mission president was. Um, and Tallahassee itself is so unique. Um, I had never been there before, but I think what made it so unique, it's very eclectic. So, you know, on one side you have politicians and the Capitol building and sort of that scene. Um, and then you also have FSU campus and all of the young people there, um, which there's a ton of variety right there. Um, and then there was the more like ghetto parts and um, the projects, which, you know, it was, it was tough to see how people live there. It was, it was so interesting to see the contrast all in one city. You know, you have people with so much, and then you have people with so little. Um, but I personally loved it because it, it made me have to really draw from, like, every aspect of myself to, to strive to relate to every, you know, every type of person from every walk of life. And I really gained a testimony um, that truly there's no such thing as an unimportant person. Everyone, you know, whether they seem like prominent or insignificant to our Heavenly Father, they're each precious. And I really learned that there just because of that contrast. And I really grew to love those people. I remember when I first arrived in Tallahassee, the air was like super thick coming out of the airplane. It was like super humid and just muggy. And to be honest, that was the first time that I really felt like, what am I doing and where am I? Even though I was still stateside, obviously, I just, it just kind of hit me, you know, and I just felt like in such a, a different world. And so, I don't know, far from what was familiar to me. And so I remember we were having our little, you know, gathering of all the new missionaries with our mission president. And he was just kind of going over a few things. Um, and I just felt again, for the first time, like a lot of just fear. I, I really did. Um, and so I was, I just started praying. I said, Holy Father, please. I just need to feel that you're aware of me, that this is where I'm supposed to be, that I'm doing the right thing. And then that's when my mission president told me my area. And he told me I was going to Destin, Florida, which is, it was known as like the gem of the mission. It was beautiful right on the beach. And for whatever reason, just that simple, that simple statement, you know, and in that um, location that he assigned to me, it brought me so much peace. It just made me feel like this is going to be okay. I can do this. <laughs> so my first area was Destin, Florida, which is absolutely exquisite. It was white sandy beaches. The water was like five different shades of blue. Um, but obviously as a missionary, that's not your focus and that's not what, you know, doesn't really affect you. So in terms of missionary work, it was, it was fairly difficult because um, it was a very affluent area, so a lot of gated communities and people that didn't feel like they had any need, you know, for anything more in their life. Um, but I learned a lot there that truly there are people prepared everywhere, and we still saw success there um, because of the Lord and the people that He had prepared. So it was it was a wonderful experience and very very beautiful and uplifting in that sense as well. Awesome. The second area that I served in was Gulf Breeze, Florida, and I was there for about six, six months. Um, I have to say this might have been one of my favorite areas simply because of um, the people that I personally met there. Um, I loved it. It was, again, it was on the beach. It was beautiful, um, but more community, family-centered um, but what amazed me about Gulf Breeze was that the ward I was in, it was, it was small, but the members that were there were so strong. They were so strong, even though they really didn't have, they were a minority for sure. But I was so inspired um, by the members there and the bishop there. He was 
on fire about missionary work. He just had this vision. And so as a missionary, it was such a joy to work with him. And I grew so much as a missionary thanks to the ward members and the bishop. So I think that's why it has, I mean, of course, all of my areas have a very special place in my heart. But I think that's kind of why Gulf Breeze holds a special place in my heart. On my mission, I, I should say before my mission, I had a personal goal or a theme for myself, so to speak. Um, initially, what caused me to have a desire to serve or part of what it was, was I desired to become the woman that Heavenly Father wanted me to become. And I wanted to fulfill the promises that I made to him. And so along with that theme of becoming, sanctification became a huge theme for me. And I thought to myself, if I can't become sanctified on my mission as a set-apart servant of the Lord, when else can I? Recognizing, of course, it's a process, but I truly felt this desire to strive to become as sanctified as possible with that sacred and precious time. And with that being my focus, the Lord was very generous and held nothing back in terms of instructing me and at many times also calling me to repentance, so to speak, you know, to, to elevate me. Um, and I, I learned a lot about the importance of obedience um, and truly embracing not only the basic rules of the, of the missionary daily life and routine, but that white handbook to truly to truly strive to to keep every aspect of it because of a deeper desire to to be like Christ and to serve as He would serve. Because the reality is, um, any time that we are obedient to a law, we receive blessings. And as a missionary, you need every blessing possible because the blessings often are not in regards to yourself, but in regards to those who you're working with and the work and their needs. And another very important aspect of missionary work is, if not the most important, is learning to receive and recognize revelation. Um, whether it's personal revelation for yourself, this is what I need to be doing better, or this is, my, this is a strength of mine, this is a weakness. Um, but to be able to discern the needs of others. I truly have a testimony, and I learned that you know, obviously we don't know these people, right? We don't, we don't know these, these people's past experiences, their fears, um, their deep desires, but God does. So as a missionary, if you can learn to listen to the spirit and to tap into that omnipotent power, you can say things and share things with them that they need so powerfully and will hit them in ways that you didn't know it would but he does. Um, so I guess along with that, again, is um, why obedience is so important. Because it, it creates you, it gives you the ability to be worthy to receive that kind of revelation because you're in tune with the Spirit. And um, along with sanctification, not only was obedience a huge part, but um, humility and um, submission. I, I think it's, it's common to think that um, meekness is weakness, you know, and strong people stand up for what they want. But I learned that a greater strength, the strength that our Savior had is the kind of strength that can subdue, you know, your own will. And whether that's compromise for a companion, you know, and maybe what, what they want to do or their needs, or whether it's just you're not feeling good that day and it's it's hard, it's not coming as naturally for you to maybe like have the same energy you normally do. I learned that through submitting my will and then turning to my Savior and my Heavenly Father for strength, I was given power and strength beyond my own. Um, and that was a huge part of the sanctification process for me because it was humbling and it brought me closer to my Savior. So one thing that I did feel prompted to share um, for whatever reason, um, I think it's very common for a lot of missionaries to feel inadequate or unworthy. Um, and that can be something that's a discouragement, whether pre-mission or um, on the mission. And I just want to share what I learned in my testimony that I learned that you don't have to be perfect to be pure. You don't have to be perfect to be worthy. What you have to be is teachable and humble and choose to 
turn to the Lord in your weaknesses and turn to your Savior. Um, we're all familiar with either 1227, but it is true. Don't be afraid of your weaknesses. Those things are given to you to, to teach us humility and to allow us to have the opportunity to come closer to the Savior because we are forced to recognize essentially that I can't do this alone. I can't do this without Him. And so you become united with Him. And that's why when you come home from your mission, you are closer to both your Savior and your Heavenly Father because you've literally worked beside them. And I think it's important to remember that this is His work. It's not on your shoulders alone. It's, it's our responsibility as missionaries, of course, to, to put forth our best effort with all our heart, might, mind, and strength. But it's important to remember that it is His work. These are His children, and He's capable of doing His own work. And He is certainly capable of um, giving you the strength and direction that you need to assist Him in this work. I think one of the most incredible things about a mission is, and really if I could like summarize it in one word, it would be becoming. Becoming in terms of myself, who I became. Um, striving to be a true representative and disciple of our Savior Jesus Christ. But possibly even more incredible is, is watching others become and fulfill their full potential. And to really, to really start to see people as who they can become rather than maybe what they are right then and there. And to see them as Christ views them. And has some really cool experiences in, in watching people um, fulfill and become who they truly are. And um, I think one experience I want to share, um, there was one girl that I, I knew in um, Gulf Breeze, Florida. And for whatever reason, her name just stood out to me. We were given a large, a long list of names of people to go and, um, you know, seek after. And I just remember seeing her name and thinking, I need, we need to find that girl. I could feel it in my heart. And um, we eventually did find her. And I remember when I first met her, she was in a terrible place. I mean, it, it really broke my heart to see it because for whatever reason, even without really knowing her, when I saw her, it just felt like I could see all that she was, you know, and knew that she was so much more than, you know, maybe what her circumstance were reducing her to. And as we continued to work with this, with this girl, um, she was only 19 at the time. Um, it was incredible over the course of seven and a half months to see her go from point A to being, you know, having addictions, low self-worth, um, just feeling so lost to after seven and a half months, because of the true principles and teachings of the gospel of Jesus Christ, she was active in church, had a church calling, but I think even more beautiful was she could see herself and her value through God's eyes. She knew she had worth. She knew she had spiritual gifts. Um, she also had a, a son, a, a child, and she recognized that he needed her and that, you know, her call and trust as a mother was something sacred and revered. And so with all my heart, I, I, loved, I loved her so much, and it was so incredible to me to see her change and, and gain a testimony of the Book of Mormon and of prayer. Um, so that will forever be in my heart, and she'll forever be in my heart as well. So another really cool experience. Um, it's always hard to select which experiences to share. Um, but when I was in my last area, somewhat towards the end of my mission in Tallahassee, um, we were in a lower-income area, and... We felt drawn to this one house with a red door, I remember. And we said, okay, this is the last door we're going to go to until we go on to our next appointment. And we get there, and it's dark inside and very dank and damp and just had this kind of oppressive feel to it. And this sweet elderly black woman opens the door, and um, you could tell that she was, you know, kind of cowering away from the light, like she hadn't seen light in a while. And... Um, you know, we introduced ourselves and, and spoke with her for a bit and asked if she would be okay if we came in to share a message. And for whatever reason, she did let us in. And I will never forget, um, as me and my companion, we introduced her to the Book of Mormon, explained to her what it was. And this woman, it was like she just lit up. She just ignited and she kept saying, 
I never knew. I never knew this existed. This is what I've been missing. And she just kept saying that over and over again. I never knew. And because she had, you know, read and internalized the Bible religiously and prodigiously, you know, prodigiously. And when we gave her that Book of Mormon, she took it and she ran with it. So that was incredible testimony builder for me to see that there truly are people who are so prepared and they don't have the truth simply because they know not where to find it. So if you are a missionary or soon to be missionary and you've just opened your call and you're going to the FTM, you are very right to be very excited. Um, I personally feel that it's the best mission ever since having served there, but um, just know that the people there are warm and they're full of life and full of passion. And I have such a testimony that we are truly called to the places and the people that the Lord knows um, we will resonate with and we will will make an impact with those people. And so just know that it is no coincidence um, that you are being sent to the Florida Tallahassee Mission. And I have such a testimony that our Heavenly Father wants to help us to become the men and the women that He knows we can be. And the incredible thing is, He knows that one of the best ways that we can become that person is by helping others to um, fulfill their own full potential. And I am so grateful for the power of prayer and for the difference that it made in my mission in giving me strength, comfort, direction. And I urge you to to take the counsel that it gives us in Alma 37, 37 and, and counsel with the Lord in all thy doings and he will direct thee for good. Whether you have nerves before your mission or you know, in the field you're, you're needing more direction, that is a real promise. It's not just there just because it's true. And I've, I've experienced that for myself. And um, my mission was truly the best decision that I ever made. And I am grateful that you've decided to serve a mission and know that it will change your life. And as much as you are willing to let the Lord come in and shape you and mold you and sculpt you, is as much as you will change and grow and be refined. And I'm so grateful for my Savior Jesus Christ and for the ability that I have because of Him to become something better and to repent and to change and evolve and be endowed with power that I would not have on my own. And I am so grateful for someone as perfect as Him that had perfect love for all the people that I loved on that mission. <laughs> And in my life, I felt like my capacity to love grew and grew on my mission. And it helped me to even just get a small understanding of the kind of love that our Savior Jesus Christ has for us all. And I'm so grateful to know that um, He paid the price for all of us. Um, and for His patience towards us. And I truly came to know my Heavenly Father as a sure knowledge. His presence um, to me was was a sure knowledge, and um, so I am I'm very excited for you and the decision that you've made, and give him heaven. <laughs>